Hello and welcome to this month's community update. I'm Brooklyn Kaufman, joined here by Superintendent Dr. Fay. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's start with recognizing the outstanding work of our AP scholars. I know they were recognized at the board meeting. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and so we had many AP scholars this year. What we recognized at the school board meeting uh, most recently was the juniors uh, from last year who I think are current seniors, and we had over 110 of them. Yeah. And so that, that did not include the seniors who graduated from last year, so I'm sure that we had well over 200 uh, AP scholars, which is amazing. And so I'm very proud of the work that's been done before I got here, so I just hope to build on that. Yeah, that's awesome. I know we now have an online option for students who are compromised or may have someone in their family that is. How exactly does that work? Yeah, so we actually pushed out an application um, a couple days ago uh, that we actually still have open um, for K through six students who are um, who may have a comp uh, compromised immune system. And there are parameters that the state put around that, uh, but they are allowing up to 10% of our population to be in a virtual setting. Um, I think we only have about 28 students right now that have applied, so I want to make a big push for that on this announcement, uh, is that if you have um, a child at home uh, that would like to have that option, uh, to please uh, take advantage of that, because we are looking at uh, creating a, kind of like a turnkey option, uh, so that it's a quality program and, and something that we can learn from. Um, so that we can build out our own virtual uh, program for next year. And I know um, you may have some questions about that later on in, the, in, in this interview as well. It's actually right now. What oh, about okay. next year? Yeah, so uh, the state uh, created this virtual option that they just unveiled. Um, and of course, it comes with a lot of parameters. And so there are certain options that had to apply based on some dynamics from last year uh, during the COVID year where uh, virtual was pretty much for everyone that wanted it. And so uh, this year there's obviously some parameters. Uh, MISD has chosen to go for K through six uh, only. Um, and interestingly enough, um, we thought we were gonna get a whole, whole lot more interest in that, and, but we haven't. And so we're gonna keep our application open. Uh, we are planning uh, to go with a turnkey model. And what that means is we're uh, planning to uh, outsource that to an entity that's an expert in this environment uh, because one of the the criteria is that your teachers cannot teach virtually while they're teaching students in class it's just way too difficult to do that so while we're doing that this year we are looking to learn some things from that so that we can build out our own K through 12 virtual option for the following year that would be almost like a standalone campus for us um, because the state of Texas has shared that they're going to keep this option open um, until the fall of 2023. And so I think that that's some good, those are good things because there is some silver lining in, in what happened in that there are some, some students who actually learn best in that environment. Uh, I've talked to many of them who really miss that environment and I've talked to teachers who have indicated that some students actually fared better in that environment versus uh, kind of coming back to this environment. And so uh, so we're going to be kind of learning from, from an expert in this system uh, for the re remainder of our year and then trying to build something that's uh, with our own staff or our own students uh, for the following year. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's talk about the extra help that some students are getting that might have struggled with the online environment last year. Yeah, so uh, we've all heard of the COVID slide, and I think that the state of Texas is trying to put in many things uh, that will help students. Uh, one of them is, is actually a bill that passed, the, it's called the 4545. MISD has done something really creative where they've created space within the school day. So our students aren't actually having to stay after hours and before school and during the summer. And so our principals have been really awesome in creating space during the school window where kids can uh, accelerate learning uh, based on what they, they lost from last year. And then also what's happening this year is when students have to be out because of COVID related reasons, uh, they, are, they can access a remote instruction environment and we have a team of teachers that are kind of working that plan right now. And so that, that's exciting to see um, the creativity and the innovation that's happening with that and people being pushed kind of, uh, especially professionals being pushed to a, a, an environment where that's productive and not uh, trying to do everything within this one classroom where you're having to do virtual and do this, and which is non-productive for everybody involved. So Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. It seems about just where everywhere I go, there's um, been a staffing problem. How's the district coping with that? 
Yeah, so I, I think our staffing problems are very, um, they're, they're nothing like what some districts are, are going through. And so it's an honor to work at MISD and we have uh, lots of applicants always. And so we started the year off um, almost at full capacity. And so we do deal with uh, subs on, on particular days, not all related to COVID, uh, but we, we, we do experience classrooms that are vacant. Um, but in that, we have been able to absorb um, instruction in most classrooms by combining classes and, and things like that. But um, it is not abnormal for us to see vacancies, um, but they're minimal compared to some vacancies that we see across the county and through the uh, actually the greater DFW area. So, um, so I'm, I'm not um, excited about vacancies, uh, but I'm also not too alarmed uh, based on what we're a actually able to do with that. Yeah, and I know we'll need more staff next year with Coleman Elementary opening and Heritage expanding as well, too. Yeah, we will probably need more staff and that we'll need overhead staff. Um, with Coleman Elementary in particular, we're, we're actually redistributing students, and so we're not, we're not gaining like 700 new students to the district in elementary to fill Coleman, we are actually going to be taking students from other campuses. And so there'll be some collapse of staff within that. And then obviously we are growing. Uh, matter of fact, we are at an all time high of enrollment. I believe that we're at, we're at 10,409 as of yesterday or uh, last Friday, which is uh, over a 6% growth from last year at this time. Uh, but for as far as Coleman is, is concerned, we have overhead, which is Obviously, we need a principal, we need secretary, APs, you know, things like that. Heritage is um, also uh, going to be gaining students from the boundaries of, of just the transition of students out of the MHS boundary over into that building when, it, when it's finally at capacity. And so there will be that kind of sharing of students as well, uh, but we'll have to add, add positions as well there. But, but I think that we have a good plan in place and we were, they've been preparing for that in this district way before I got here. And so um, I think we're, we'll be okay there. Uh, with those new facilities, there will be campus boundary changes. I know that those maps are on the district website, but how will the current students in those buildings be affected? Um, I, we are putting out, our board did um, uh, approve a grandfather uh, clause um, that was based on if students in certain grade levels actually wanted to stay, uh, that they could, they could basically fill out an application to do so. And the last time I checked, we had about 50% completion rates, meaning that 50% of the, the kids that were in those um, grade levels that could choose to stay, they had filled it out. And what we're seeing is that about 60% of the people that are in those grade levels that could stay, they're choosing to stay. So for example, if I was an MHS student and I wanted to stay and I was in 10th grade and I was a student that next year would go to Heritage High School, I could choose this year to stay at MHS for my next two years. And so we have about 60% of the people that are actually filling out those applications, choosing to stay at their current locations. And with elementary, we're seeing about the same participation rate. We have about 50% of the people that have completed that. And we're seeing about 50% of the people that actually want to stay in their home campus. And so our board has been very gracious in allowing that to happen. And, and I think those are good things because uh, students establish your friendships and your teams and your, your people, if you will. And, and those are good things. It's hard to make transitions later, you know, as, especially as you go through a school where you, you have established uh, relationships across you know, all your programs and stuff. Uh, but then the other thing to think about is because we're experiencing such growth is that there may be an opportunity for us to look at those, um, the numbers within those boundaries again to see if we're actually balanced again. And so that's gonna be, we'll, we'll get those uh, geo, what they call a geocoding done and we'll get that data back sometimes within the next two weeks and we'll have more, more information after that. But yeah, so as we grow, uh, things change and it's exciting, but you know, I'm a little anxious about it, I guess, but yeah, I want to make sure that we're balanced and serving kids well. Okay, let's talk about another topic that comes from social media, which would be the food service in the mm -hmm. district. Yeah, so we know that, I know that I put out a letter um, last week to, to all parents explaining some of the things that I think the whole country is experiencing. Uh, there's a lack of, of, of workers. Uh, there's a shortage of workers. 
um, a short of shortage for various reasons. Uh, some I know, some I don't know. Um, we've dealt with uh, where we've actually had to go in and serve lunches, um, myself included, because we, ha we had lack, uh, lack of staff. And while that's not a problem, uh, uh, um, we don't mind doing that occasionally, but we've had to do that. Um, but there is also a, a food supply chain issue uh, that has impacted the, not that we have food available, but what is available compared to what was supposed to be available. And so uh, Aramark is our provider that, that actually, that we outsource our, outsource our lunches to and breakfast to. And they've been really good about um, providing food. It just may not be the top priority food that, that students want. And so we're aware of that. And we're trying to work with them and around that, that, that not, uh, what I call nonsense. But, but it really is a bigger issue. And I think that most people, you can go to a restaurant now and you know, you'll see signs up. They say, please bear with us because we're dealing with staff shortages or you wait longer uh, at your table to get your food and you know or we're only serving certain things and and I don't think that um, school districts are immune to that and so MISD is experiencing that same thing and so while we apologize uh, we do want good service for our kids and we have been working with Aramark to make sure that that we're expecting high quality service from that vendor yeah We've heard that you're now out and about visiting classrooms in our district. Do you have any aspiring stories that you'd like to share? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, I had gone to, I went to a couple campuses last week, and I'm trying to do uh, at least three to four campuses a week, uh, and I'm asking uh, principals just to, to show me, you know, classrooms. I want to see what students are doing. I want to see what teachers are doing. And I stumbled upon a, a great class uh, last week at Long Branch, there was lots of great classes, first of all, but this one class was a kinder classroom. I believe it was Miss Perry's classroom. And the amazing thing about that classroom was that it was they were teaching reading, and what I found amazing about it was that the teacher was teaching kindergarten kids about becoming independent readers. And so kids were understanding how they were gonna become that. Um, and very specifically, I remember her saying, we're going to become independent readers. And she was explaining how they were going to get there. And they replied with they were going to be, they were going to build their stamina. And then she had them explain it, how are they going to do that? And they, they added that they were going to do a little bit more each day. And so I think that's something that we can be proud of at MISD is that we have teachers that are teaching kindergarten students the reasons why we do things. And it's not just teaching them how to read words, but how to read uh, for, for, for longevity and, and why we need to do certain things. And, and at the kindergarten level, that's just amazing. So hats off to Ms. Perry and to Long Branch Elementary. It's great work happening there. After four months of learning about our district and our community, are you developing a vision that you would like to help build here? Yeah, um, I've always really understood kind of my why in education. And I've always wanted um, to help students or to create a system that would help students um, lead a, a really good quality of life. And I think the one thing that's changed for me through the pandemic and through my four months being here is that I've, I've built, I've had some big broad assumptions uh, built into that why, which is that maybe my why and how we got there was the right way, which was, you know, I want kids to have an education and I want them to go off to college and I want them to, you know, uh, have families and a work-life balance and, you know, all those things. And, and what I've gathered in the past couple months is that maybe my why uh, is still the same, um, but it's built on different things. And, and I read something that made so much sense and it was actually from a community member here, but it was on his LinkedIn account and so I can't, I don't recall the name, but I remember it very specifically being from a resident here in Midlothian. It was, um, you know, I want um, I want kids to have, you know, uh, quality relationships, and I want them to have joy in their life, and 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 to have or joy in their heart, and to have love in their life. And I think that that's really uh, when I say quality of life now, as I get older, um, like that's the quality of life I want for 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 students is that when they leave here that they have those things um, because if they if we can help them build those things which are really strong healthy relationships and and a love of life and a joy in their heart then they can do whatever they want and follow their dreams and so I still want the same thing I want them to have a quality of life I just think it was it may have changed and what my assumptions are, are very different now as a result of me just 
living and working uh, in the city of Midlothian, so I'm happy about that. Finally, Heritage just had their homecoming last week. Congratulations to Asia Purnell and Colton Sorson for being named homecoming king and queen. Thank you, Dr. Faye. That's all the time we have for you this month. Look for us again next month.